So, I was looking for a cheap mirrorless camera recently, so I could adapt some old vintage Minolta lenses to it, and get into some mirrorless cameras. So of course, I didn't even think about Canon. I was actually looking purely at Sony. I was looking at the a6300 and a6500 along with the a7 II, because they can easily be gotten for under $1000 used, they have focus peaking 4K, high bitrate, and a6500 and a7 II of in-body image stabilization, which is perfect for old lenses. The issue with this is I'd be spending a lot of money on something I don't really consider more than a toy for now. I like my DSLRs and my OVFs, and I'd only be using old manual glass for it, so I wouldn't even be getting an absurd amount of use out of the camera. Then I remembered, oh, Magic Lantern's a thing. So I thought, oh man, I get an EOS M, $150, 2.5K raw video with focus peaking, high bit rate, regular shooting, and oh man, got a short flange distance, mmm. So I went on eBay and I spent about $150 on a used EOS M and got a Minolta MD to EFM adapter. No man, this camera's something else. So, the EOS M. This was a Canon mirrorless camera that came out in about 2012. I got mine for $150, but if you hunt for them, you can probably get one for just above $100. But I really don't recommend spending any more than about $150 on this camera. It's just not worth it. It has a 720p or 1 million dot screen, pretty rough battery life, and a really uncomfortable grip that's basically non-existent, along with an 18 megapixel sensor that's about 8 years old. This is basically a T4i, without a mirror and an awful body. It also basically weighs nothing, so it's just hard to hold in general. I have big hands, but I think for anyone, this is just an incredibly difficult to handle camera, especially with old manual lenses. And not only that, there's just not enough buttons on this camera. To change any setting, you have to use this main scrolly wheel thing. There isn't even a dedicated ISO or aperture button as far as I can tell. You have to use the touch screen to adjust those, and it's an ancient touch screen. Unless you're shooting video, I would just suggest putting this camera on auto ISO, setting your shutter speed and aperture to somewhere around what you want, and just trying your best. But again, this is a $150 or less camera, so you can't really ask for a ton. So Magic Lantern. First I'm going to start out with what Magic Lantern is. This is a dope little like firmware hack for Canon cameras, and adds a ton of features. Just to name a few, we got raw video, focus peaking, a built-in intervalometer, waveforms, false color and just so many more things, it's absolutely absurd. It's only available for Canon cameras though, and it's only available on a few older Canon cameras, which have slow SD card write speeds and really old sensors. And after seeing all this, I just knew I needed a Magic Lantern camera. But whenever someone gets one of these cameras and loads Magic Lantern, they just take a few videos in the room of paper or something and say it's amazing and everyone needs to buy one of these cameras. But I wanna see if it's actually usable for something besides Glam shots of paper and beautiful window views. Mmm, just those raw tree branches and dirty pots. So stills. I've been using this camera for both stills and video, but I feel like the video is more interesting, so I want to really quickly go over stills. With Magic Lantern, you can get focus peaking, which shows which part of the images in focus using these little, little dots. I set mine to red because it's just easiest to see, and red's the best color. It's also been shockingly accurate for me even more so than the Sony a7 II I just got. I've also grown to love having this camera to take places, just for little random quick pictures. But this is a mirrorless camera from 2012, so the battery life is, it's pretty terrible to say the least. I get maybe two hours from it, which is absolutely terrible, especially compared to a DSLR or even a modern mirrorless camera. I also really couldn't touch any ISO above about 800. That along with an awful dynamic range means this is just really far from an ideal stills camera. But it's $150, so you really can't ask for much. But that's all manual glass. In terms of autofocus, I really can't say much myself, but I've been told it's somewhat okay. But it's still not ideal, and it's still really far from a DSLR. I think this camera is ideal for getting a cheap Minolta 51.7 MD and an MD to EFM adapter and just shooting on some fantastic manual glass. Okay, so the fun part, video. This camera can do 2.5K raw video, and well, not really anymore actually. Essentially, one of the major issues with this camera and most Magic Lantern cameras is the slow write speeds to cards. This camera used to be capable of 2.5K 10-bit raw video, but as it turns out, kinda killed some people's cameras and cards, so, now you can't download it anymore. 
which of course is a bit of a bummer, but hey, we still have raw video. Then we just gotta get into the menu, put it on raw, and yeah, it didn't work well. As it turns out, once you download Magic Lantern, you need to look at the experimental builds for 10-bit RAW. This is so you can record at higher resolutions with the slightly lower bitrate. So after downloading the experimental build that has 10-bit video, I can finally record RAW video. But you have to crop your video, which is fine, the EOS R has a crop, and I mean Micro Four Thirds is a thing, and the GH5 even has a crop for slow motion. The issue with that is this is not a 1.5 times crop, or even a 2 times crop. This is a total of a five times crop. So if you throw a 50 millimeter lens on this camera, it's gonna be about 250 millimeters. And along with that, you get super noisy images and just terrible quality all around. One way people get around the zoom issue is by buying old C-mount lenses that are around eight or 12 millimeter. Another way is buying Super 8 or Super 16 lenses, which are super wide and super fast. So let's actually talk about shooting video on this camera. The first thing you need to do is switch it to video mode, then hold down on the main dial to get into the menu. To actually do fun stuff, you need to scroll over to the modules page, and on this page you'll find MLV Record. This is the raw recording module. Once you load that, restart the camera and open up the menu again, and head to the video section. If you try to shoot raw video normally, you'll end up with just a mess like this. This is where that crop comes in. You have to enable the one-to-one -one crop by turning movie crop on. This is basically the same as zooming in on a raw file, basically. So the quality is, it's, it's pretty rough. I found the best setting for me is 10-bit raw with a resolution of 1800 by 1012. A perfectly standard resolution with a 4.66 times crop, as everyone uses. Shooting 14-bit video is basically pointless, at least in my eyes it is. You're getting a little bit more detail in the shadows, but the extra data just isn't worth it. The lossless video feature doesn't seem to work for me most of the time. When I try, I just get a white glitchy video that I can't use for anything besides like a hipster band cover, so... But for some reason, the day I started writing this script, it started working though, but then it stopped working. I don't know, I just avoid it until an update fixes it or you buy a new camera that actually works. Shooting at this resolution won't give you continuous recording though, so for some ungodly reason, you want to use this camera to shoot in 720p continuous, you can do that. I personally think this camera just shines though as a B cam without raw video. You can increase the bitrate by three times and shoot 1080p 24. The footage isn't ideal, but I think it's the perfect B cam if you're already stuck with Canon. So this might be the worst part of the raw video feature of this camera, the workflow. Instead of using the traditional raw DNG like Blackmagic uses, this camera uses .mlv files. And to actually use these files, you have to download a program to convert the .mlv files to .dng files. I personally used MLV Producer to get rid of the awful focus points that leave red dots everywhere. From here, you export the .mlv file as .dng files, or you can edit them in the program and export them as H.264 files if you want. I personally don't do that. I do a little bit of touch up on the file, and then I export them as .dng and import all of them in the Lightroom. Then I edit a single frame and apply it to every single frame in the video. And then I export all of the frames of the video from Lightroom into a folder, and then finally I can put them into Premiere. Overall, this is an awful workflow. You have to use an open source program that is not stable and far from ideal, and you can't just import the raw DNG like you can with the BMPCC 4K or really any of other Blackmagic's cameras that do raw. Oh, also the footage looks awful and you should not even consider getting this camera for raw video. If you just want to play with raw video, you can download it online. Even Blackmagic has some raw video from the BMPCC 4K. Oh my god, that name sucks. <sighs> Unless you're looking for a camera to start shooting mirrorless for incredibly cheap, this camera's just a waste of money. Don't buy it. Even though I did and I still use it, but that's besides the point. Anyways. Thanks for watching this video, guys. This was kind of long, and it was kind of different. Uh, I actually kind of bought this camera just to make this video, because every time I saw a video on it, I thought, wow, this is terrible. Either way, I think this is still a pretty cool camera. I don't think it's useless either. I personally have actually used it a few times, uh, and I've personally continued to use it for videos, even though I never upload any. Uh, but either way, it's, it's overall kind of rubbish, and I can't really suggest it for anyone. But if you still want to buy it, please buy mine. Take it. <laughs>
anyways thanks for watching guys remember to like check out my instagram and subscribe are we supposed to say that anymore i don't know youtube like changes everything every time i make a video anyways thanks for watching guys i'll see you next time wow i actually got a take crazy